Some of you might have been thinking that I'd use an oscillator to make some flowers sway, but the ripple of the oscillator doesn't really lend itself too favorably to having that nice sway motion. Uh, it's cool for certain things, but flowers, not so much. What I'd done instead was to use the humble old line tool, but instead of having line, come down to spiral. And here we've got a few different options where we can change this. Namely, we want to be changing the end angle. And you can see here that we have our sway effect. So start off, we're just going to change the outer radius. With this end angle, I'm just going to pop a noise on there. Change this to whatever you want. And you can see we've got a bit more of a sway effect. Basically, we're just going to use the duplicator to spin this around. However you want. And with the duplicator on the position, we right click and we click on Pathfinder. In Pathfinder, we drag our basic line and untick loop. And then we can just slide it up the top there. And I'm just going to shrink down this a little bit. And I'm going to drag the duplicator above the basic line so we don't see the stem of the, of the flower. Okay, so let's look at the other properties in the Pathfinder. Um, and you can see here what is missing is some rotation. So if you jump into the value in the value tab, we can just click on this, bring it into our duplicator and click on rotation. And that way we have it perfectly swaying. I'm just going to create a polygon as well. And I'm going to place that as zero, zero. And I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Cool. And we also have our leaf. So we're going to put the leaf into another duplicator. And this duplicator will rename to leaf. And we're going to change this to path. Again, we add the basic line path to it. And what we can do here is we can just change the scale. So I'll quickly start off by adding a stagger in there. So we're going to set this to 0.2 maybe and 0.5. I'll just change this around. So there's just a couple of options that we're going to have to tweak in, in the duplicator. So we've got travel. And we've also got length. So you can just have a bit of a tweak with those and see how you go. And we want the, rot uh, the rotation of these leaves to alternate as it goes up the stem. So for this, we're just going to right click on shape rotation and add an array. And just add what, what you think works. And if we add more of the, whoops, sorry, if we add more of these up, you can just see how they're just going to alternate across each one. If you wanted to, you could add randoms in there or whatever else to add a bit more complexity. But that is basically the flower we just animated. Okay, so let's try something here. Let's just Select all of these and hit Control Shift C. And that's going to turn it into a new composition. I'm just going to call this Flower New. So now I'm just going to put our new flower into a duplicator. And let's put this onto Linear and spread that out. For the most part, this looks okay, but the issue that we're having is that the leaves. Start big, medium, then small here. So we just got to jump back into the main one. Bring up our duplicator leaf. Right click, advanced, use incoming index. And then you can see that the, the leaves going up the stem are all okay. 
Okay, to get the bee flying around, it wasn't too difficult. I just used a few keyframes. I think in total there are about six keyframes to get that bee to fly across. We're just going to bring in a star, change the color of it so it jumps out a bit more. And we're going to use a tool called Get Submesh Transform. And with this, we're going to bring in our duplicator. And we're going to grab the output position and we're going to put that onto our star shape. And if we just change this, you can see it's going to jump back to the base of all these flowers. So we're going to break this down to characters instead. And now if we sweep through, you can see it's going through a lot more of the details there. So, so this is submesh position four. Submesh position 19. Okay, and you can see these positions here. So basically I just duplicated this. Then I basically used a position blend. And I added one into the top one. And this into the bottom one. And then we put our blend position into our star shape position. And you can see, see that it goes between the two. So with the get submesh transform as well, you can add the rotation to that. So that way when the B, whoops, so that way when the B is on it, you can see it's rotating. Okay, so what we're just going to get here is pull this rotation from the submesh. And pull this rotation as the second option. And we can also just use the blend that we have animated up here. And we can just put that into the strength as well, so we don't have to double up on the animation. And then you can see that it sticks to the, sticks to the flower here. And both of these are blending across, you can see here. And that's going to land on that one over there as well. So when the bee was flying across, there's a bit of noise as well. I used the behavior mixer to do that and I did a tutorial last week about it. So if you haven't checked that out, just jump on board and away you go. So a few other things that you can do with this is just changing, adding the random length to the line so that there's different variations in the lines. You've got different variations with the petal colors. You can play around with the leaves as well just to add more variation. Thanks for watching.